Of all the challenging concepts in NumPy, the one that's most crucial to wrap your head around is probably broadcasting. In this video, we'll see how broadcasting works and why it's useful. So what is broadcasting? Well, we've already seen it in action, although you might not have picked up on it. When we add a scalar to a 1D array like this, the scalar gets added to each element of the array. In essence, NumPy is expanding the scalar into a three element array and then doing element-wise addition between the arrays. Of course, under the hood, NumPy doesn't actually do this because it'd be horribly inefficient, but in essence, that's what's happening. And that's an example of broadcasting. In two dimensions, you can imagine we have a matrix of values, foo, like this, to which we'll add a 1D array, boo, with the same number of elements as our matrix has columns. And in this case, NumPy carries out the addition as if it first copies Boo along a new vertical axis to match the shape of Foo, and then carries out element-wise addition. Now, what if Boo had two elements? Perhaps NumPy would add Boo to each column of Foo. Nope. In this case, we get an error. So how does broadcasting work, and when can we use it? Formally speaking, suppose we want to add two arrays A and B. Moving backwards from the last dimension of each array, we check if their dimensions are compatible. Dimensions are compatible if they are equal or either of them is one. If all of A's dimensions are compatible with B's dimensions or vice versa, they're compatible arrays. Informally speaking, I think it really helps to visualize the arrays you're working with and how they'd expand for element-wise operations. Let's see some examples. Here, A is a 3x4 array, and B is a 3x1 array. We start by comparing the last dimension of each array. Since the last dimension of A is 4, and the last dimension of B is 1, NumPy can expand B by making 4 copies of it along its second axis. So these dimensions are compatible. Now we have to compare the first dimension of A and B. Since they're both 3, they're compatible. The only thing left for NumPy is to carry out whatever procedure we wanted on two equivalently sized 3x4 arrays. And remember, NumPy doesn't actually expand B like this because it'd be horribly inefficient. Let's see another example. Here A is a 4x4 array and B is a 2x1 array. The last dimension of A is 4 and the last dimension of B is 1, so these dimensions are compatible. And just like the last example, we can temporarily transform B by making four copies of it along its second axis. Now we compare the first dimension of each array. In this case, there isn't an obvious way to expand B into a 4x4 array to match A, or vice versa. So these arrays are not compatible. Let's see another example where A has three dimensions and B has two dimensions. So, as before, we start by comparing the last dimension of each array. In this case, A is 4 and B is 1, so we can expand B into a 2x4 array, making these dimensions compatible. Next, we compare the second to last dimension of each array. In this case, A is 1 and B is 2. This time, we expand A, copying it twice along its second axis to match B. At this point, we're out of B dimensions, so we know A and B are compatible. To complete our mental model of how math between these arrays would work, we can imagine copying B three times along a newly added first dimension. We're left with two transformed arrays, each with shape 3 by 2 by 4 which we can easily add or subtract or combine in some other way. Before I close out this lecture, I just want to say that when I do this sort of broadcasting expansion process in my head, I don't actually go through this formal process thinking of the shape tuples. I just kind of visualize the shape of these arrays, and I visualize how they'd expand into identical sizes. If you just look at this setup, it's kind of intuitive to see that A has three matrices, so we know B is going to be copied into three matrices, and B has two rows, so we know that A's matrices are going to expand into two rows, and since A has four columns, B's single column is going to get copied into four columns, and all of this works out pretty nicely. So that's sort of how I do this in my head and what my intuition is for broadcasting. 